So glad to have you here today. If you are glad that you're here on this day, would you give a honk real quick? Amen. Amen. Well, look, as we get started this morning, we're so glad that you're here. We're looking forward to an awesome day together. Um, those of you who are on Facebook, if you could give us a little thumbs up right quick. And we're so glad that you're here and join us as well. And so while we've gathered together this morning, good to see you. Uh, let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's always wonderful to see each and every one of you. Although I cannot physically see you, I know that, that you are all here gathered to worship Jesus Christ with us. I know it's looking like we have a little light at the end of the tunnel with this whole thing. But regardless of what happens, let's just focus on that God's love is never going to fail us. So no matter what happens in the days to come, uh, His love never fails. And that's what we're going to sing about this morning. Uh, so join us in worship.
Well, amen. We are so. If you this morning would say, husbands, I just want to talk to the husbands. Love that man next to you. But as we're looking around, uh, I know that we have some singles here today as well. And so if you're saying it's at us real quick, if you're just saying, you know what, I'm looking for somebody to, to just spend my life with. If we see a couple of those flashes. Look, we're glad that you're here. Would you look at the people next to you today? Would you kind of just wave at them real quick? Would you just kind of greet one another as we continue to worship this morning? Amen. Good to see you. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken sing it out my fear doesn't stand Story. 
gathered together today now I don't know if when sunshine hits this bald head of mine it begins to kind of glare and gives this look I mean all right uh, okay I really funny um ha, ha, ha. I even had like a, a, a little ducktail in the back, and so uh, so you know, so back then with my big fluffy hair, it was all going on. Now you can be uh, blinded today by the bald head, but back then I had this hair, and we we were in this group kind of similar to some of y'all. Uh, we were in this group called ZYP. If some of y'all from Huntsville are watching today, y'all may remember those back in the the hood days. But but it, it was kind of similar to some of y'all, uh, and I know that's why some of y'all are way in the back. Some some of y'all in those both sight days. Me or some of y'all ladies may remember those SAK or 4K or BTS or the torch and light it up and stuff. So some of y'all may remember those days. Well, all of a sudden while we were there, all right. So while we were there, uh, all of a sudden in the middle of of me being in high school with the lines in my hair and with the little uh, the little ducktail in the back, all of a sudden we had a high school girl who decided that she was going to begin. She was going to begin dating a uh, le less than that. But this dude was a trained by the U.S. Uh, Army, a trained weapon of war. We were a bunch of high school guys with lines in our hair and a little ducktail in the back. And so she began dating this, 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 uh, this GI. And so we were thinking to ourselves, you know what? That ain't right, man. This dude's too old for this girl. There's no way in the world that we ought to let him date. When he had this little platoon of friends, we were out there and, and we were, um, we were out in a little field, uh, uh, drinking Sprite and stuff. You know, that's what we were doing back then. I know some of y'all did that as well. And so we were out in this field and all of a sudden it was dark out there. There were no lights and we see a bunch of vehicles that begin to, to pull into this field and one by one it's kind of like you know uh, renegades roll up kind of thing and, and so we're all sitting out there and they got their platoon guys all coming along every one of these guys are trained by the US Army and as they're trained they have combat boots on with some camo gear on and they come and step out of the car now I got my stance ready I'm like oh it's about to go down and before I know it I'm on the ground uh, because some dude came and he hit me so hard you talking about just like 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 ouch kind of moments this dude hit me so hard here i was i was on the ground and when i was on the ground and that i see I, i'm seeing guys getting kicked in the head with combat boots and everything you know what i did dude i didn't get up i laid on the ground i ain't getting up and letting these dudes kill me because these are trained weapons of war and so what i wanted to do was is i wanted to wave a white flag of surrender because i could not fight that battle it was too much he didn't even know I'd be a preacher one day. I mean, my, my nose is still, if you look on Facebook today, you'll notice my nose still got a little gangster lean to one side where that dude hit me so hard in my face, I was not getting back up. I was staying on the ground. Now, you could call me a punk if you want to, but I got hit that time. That was enough for me. Now, let's face it today. Some of us are going through some of the greatest battles where you feel like today someone is punching you in the face. In fact, if you look at some of our marriages and times like this, I know that some of y'all are, are struggling when it comes to that battle that you're facing because of all the stress and turmoil. I, I know financially there's a lot of us who are going through times and, and you know, you, you've gone through those difficult times of trying to figure out my job and my future and oil prices and stock markets and, and we got all of that kind of stuff and you're so you're, 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 you're facing been facing battles for a long time fear 
and depression and worry and, and just things that are beginning to happen in your life. Those are things that have happened in your life over and over. And, and it's been hitting you really hard right now. It's been hitting you in your face so hard that you're not sure if I can get up. Some of y'all have spent time on the side of your bed just bowing your head and saying, God, I need you right now. God, I can't make it through right now. I'm worried about health concerns. I'm worried about my family, my kids, my grandkids. I'm worried about all my employees. I'm, I'm just worried right now. And so we go through this time and we begin to wonder ourselves, God, God, what happened to me? Uh, God, God, what in the world is going on in this battle that I'm facing right now? Well, friends, if you have your Bible today, if you're on Facebook, I encourage you to turn there. Find your Bible just for a moment. Let's turn to Mark chapter 14 because I want you to, to see a battle one time that Jesus went through. You may be thinking to yourself, no one understands, no one gets what I'm going through. But look in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, starting in verse 32, the Bible says this. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch. Verse 35. And he went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, and watch this now, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Some of y'all may want to say that right in your car this morning. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And then he came and found them sleeping once again. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and he prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. Now, I hope that the Lord would add the blessing to, to the reading of his word. But I, I hope that you noticed here for a moment that Jesus, did you see some of the descriptive words about what Jesus was going through? Exceedingly sorrowful, even to the point of death. Verse 35, it says that he was praying that, that the Lord might take that cup from him and so forth. Verse 36, the cup from him. Uh, here the Lord was going through one of the most difficult times in his life. Uh, here the Lord was facing uh, deep sorrow and deep times of, uh, uh, of just this, this, this trouble and being distressed. And so there I was in high school. I was thinking that, you know what, we had some kind of a chance. And as I was there in high school, that dude hit me in my face. You'd hold it up and punch your own self in the face if you say one of these two things. Here's the first thing I hope you don't say. Going through. No one here could deeply distress and fall into the ground. Now listen to me, friends. Jesus Christ knows everything that you're going through, even right now. Amen. Amen. He, he, he knows. He sympathizes. He understands. He gets what you're going through. Jesus Christ knows what it's like to, to have been there. He's not a God who is out there somewhere who doesn't. There's never anything that you go through right now in your past or in the days to come. There's never anything that you go through that God does not understand that God does not know. He is right there alongside of you. And friends, listen to me. You can't escape God. You can't hide from God. You can't say to yourself, well, God could never understand. God could never So, so you better be real careful if there comes a time in your life that you think to yourself, well, God doesn't know. But here's another thing that I hope you don't say during this time. I hope you don't say, God doesn't care. You see, sometimes in the middle of life, we think, well, no one understands. But sometimes we also say, God doesn't care. God doesn't care about what I'm going through. He doesn't know the, 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 the suffering that I am going through. Listen, Jesus was with these disciples every single day. He even brought them with him even to this point. He knew that their flesh was weak. He knew that their spirit was willing, but their flesh was weak. He understood, but he cared. Listen to me now for a moment. Do you, do you know why Jesus went through the hell that he went through? Do you know why Jesus came and suffered and died on a cross? Do you know why they put a crown of thorns on his head? Do you know why Jesus went through all of that? Look at the people in your car. Look at the people next to you that are here parked next to you. Can I tell you the reason why Jesus Christ went through all of that was for you.
Amen. So, so, so when you begin to when you begin to question, does God care? Does God even care about what I am going through? Does God even love me even after all the ways that I failed him? Does God even care about me? Well, the cross is our constant daily reminder that that is exactly how much God would care for us, that he would come and die right there on the cross. Now, you may say to yourself, well, why is this happening to me? It's not fair. It's not right. You know, I've tried to live right and do good, and I've tried to do all those things. Why are these things happening to me? Now, now you're not going to like my answer for a moment. You're really not. But listen to me. If you're wondering yourself, well, well, does God care? Does does God know about where I'm at? Does God even care that I'm going through these things right now? Listen, if if it happened to Jesus, if it happened to Jesus, why, why wouldn't it happen to you? If Jesus went through times of sorrow and times of uh, of great distress. Uh, What makes us think that we won't in this lifetime not go through the same kind of stuff? That is part of living on this planet is the very fact that we go through times that are hard and times that are tough and times that we we face all this trials and, and disappointment. If you don't like it right here, let me tell you, there is good news. There's a place called heaven where there's no crying, sickness, or pain. That is one day, but in the right now, we have to know that God cares about everything that you're going through. See, see, we need to know that he, he still was willing to suffer and die. D- don't you dare. Don't you dare say to yourself, you know what? Well, God could never care about me. God doesn't know where I'm at. God doesn't love me. Listen, he, he, wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have gone through all that he went through if he did not care about you. He did it for you. So we see Jesus Christ, the suffering Savior, who did it all for you. But did you notice what the disciples were doing? Here Jesus in the middle of his pain and sorrow and distress. Here Jesus, as he's suffering, look at what the disciples did. Well, the disciples did this. They, as the Bible says there in in verse 37 and 40, the Bible says that there they were, he found them sleeping, and he returned again, and he found them asleep. Now, I know one thing. You know what one of the blessings of this virus has been? is that this virus has actually begun to awaken some of us. It has woken some of us up because, amen? Because what this virus is doing, it is showing us, you know what? Where I used to be away from the Lord, I'm I'm taking steps to get closer to Him. Where I used to not really care about the things of God, I'm willing to come on a a Sunday morning and come into a parking lot and say, "I, I want to grow closer to the Lord. I need God right now. I need Him to bless my family. I need Him in the middle of this time. And so in the middle of all that we are going through, the Bible says that here these disciples were asleep. We're waking up. But it was just too much for the saints. It was too much for them to, to wait for an hour. Peter, the, the loud mouth, and James, the son of thunder, and John, the beloved, it was just too much for them to handle. They got tired of waiting on God. They got tired of waiting on Jesus to come and return to them. They just got tired of all of the heaviness that they were going through. In a lot of ways, we relate to them in so many ways. We're getting tired. We're getting tired of waiting for all of this to be over with. We're getting tired of things to be made right again. We're getting tired of all of the stress and turmoil and strain, and we're getting just like them. And if you look in verse 40, the Bible says, the disciples, after they were asleep and the struggle was real, the disciples did not know what to answer Jesus Christ. They didn't know what the answer was. They didn't know how to fix what they were going through. They didn't know what to do about all of the turmoil they were in. And let's face it, some of us today are just like that. We don't know how to fix what's going on. We feel the turmoil and the strain and the burden uh, on our businesses, on our lives, on our family. We feel all of this pressing down on us and we have no idea how to get out of it. And so the disciples had no answer. Can I tell you today, I want to show you an answer that Jesus had. The answer was this. If you look there um, in your Bible to verse 36, Jesus gave the answer, and I think and I hope and I pray that this would be the answer for you today as well. Verse 36, Jesus simply says this, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. Now let me give you a quick Bible lesson. The word Abba in the original language is similar to the word that you and I would use for the word daddy. And so when Jesus, in the middle of his his distress and turmoil and strain, he does one thing. He begins his prayer by saying, Abba, Abba, 
daddy, my, my father. He, he, you, you know, it's one thing to, um, you know, to say who's your daddy, who's your baby and all that. But when you know that Jesus Christ, that God the Father is your, is your Abba, he is your daddy, it's a personal relationship. And if there's anything that you need today, it is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To be able to come to him as Abba. And then he says, not only something about Abba, but he is my father. He is the one who is in control of everything. The God of everything is not only my father, but he is he is he even says he is my daddy and jesus says look all things lord are possible for you everything you could take care of all of my stuff you could fix everything right now but he says nevertheless not my will but yours be done you see the way that jesus faced every turmoil and stress and strain and all the things that he knew and did not know the way that he faced it he faced it with that one prayer lord not my will but yours be done. I surrender everything to you. Lord, I lay it all down at the foot of the cross. No matter the cost, no matter how hard it might be, Lord, your will be done in my life. And if there's an answer for us today, same prayer where you in your car, you look at the people next to you in your car, you have to be willing to say this, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Amen? See, not, not, not my will, but yours be done. Let, let's face it, there are times of, of us going through deep distress, just like Jesus. There are times of us being troubled and exceedingly sorrowful, just like Jesus. There's times when the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, just like Jesus. There's times that we say, Lord, take this cup from me. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to go through all that I'm going through. Lord, take all of this away from me, but away from me. But of that time what i ended up having to do was very simply i cannot make it i cannot survive and so i'm going to have to put up a white flag of surrender and for some of you who are struggling today for some of you who are going through great times of distress some of you who are going through great times of of worry and anxiety some of you who are facing battles like you've never wanted to face before you know what you need to do today today you need to come to the lord and you need to say to the lord lord i i give you a white flag of surrender lord i no longer hold on Freely give, and I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. Why? Render it all to Jesus. And friends, listen to me. You, right where you are, if you want to make it through this time, if you want to say, Lord, I need you today. Lord, I, I, I give everything to you. I've got to make it through this time. You have to say that same prayer. Lord, not my will, not what I want, not my timing, not my way of fixing this, but Lord, I surrender it all to you today. I give it all to you right where you are. If you're watching on Facebook today, you need to say right in your house, you need to say, you know what? I'm going to surrender it all to Jesus even today. Amen. Now listen, friends, uh, there, there's a, a song that says it this way, that God is too wise to be mistaken, and God is too good to be unkind. And so when there comes times in life that I can't understand, and I can't see his plan, what do I need to do? I need to trust his heart. And I don't know the answer to what's about to happen in our lives. I don't know how we're going to get out of this time or when we're going to get out of this time or how we're going to take care of things financially. I don't know any of that, but I know one thing. I'm going to trust the heart of a God who says, I am your Abba Father. I am your daddy. I am the one who loves you, who knows who you are, who cares about you, and I will take care of you even today. But we've got to. Amen. But we've got to do this. We've got to wave a white flag of surrender. We've got to say, Lord, I give it all to you. And you know what we're going to do today? Um, today, I, I want you to wave a white flag of surrender. And so some of our, our, our prayer teams, what I want to do is, is you may say to yourself, you know what? There are some things in my life that I need to surrender to the Lord. There are some things going on that I just need the Lord to come and say, Lord, I give it and I surrender it all to you. And so as you, as a, as a symbol of your surrender today, you, you may have a, 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 uh, uh, an antenna today in your car. You may have a, uh, something that we can.
even to your um, to your windshield wiper because today we want to let you know that you know what if you're saying I want to give it all and surrender it all to the Lord then I'm going to tie a white flag of surrender and so if you're willing to do that even today you might right now just want to put up a flasher and say you know what uh, I, I need you to bring me one of those flags why because today I'm surrendering something what could we surrender I'm going to surrender my family I'm going to surrender my life. I'm going to give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is so trustworthy. And so, friends, today, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, today, if you, you might need him, today you might say, you know what, I, I'm tired of all the worry and strain in my life. I, I want to surrender that to the Lord today. You can just put those flashers on right where you are, and they'll come, and, uh, and you know, they'll be able to just get you one of those to you today. I'm going to wave a white flag. Raylan and the team are going to sing a song that says, you know what, through the fire. He never promised that this road that we have would be easy, but what he did promise is that he would walk with us through the fire. And so I want to pray for you for just a moment. I appreciate y'all way in the back, and I appreciate y'all way in the front, but I appreciate most of all that the Lord himself says he wants to speak to you. He wants you to surrender it all today. So let's pray for a moment. Father, I come to you, and I thank you for each person who's here in this parking lot. And Lord God, those who are even watching on Facebook today, those who are going to be watching on YouTube later on, and, and Father, I pray for each family that's represented that, Lord God, in the middle of the strain and stress and all that we're going through, that, Lord God, that you would speak to us today. Lord, if there's somebody here who's never given their life to Jesus Christ, they don't know what it's like to have the free pardon of sin, that's the day they would just call out to a God who gave his all for us. And so, Lord, we know you died on the cross for us. We know you rose again. But today we place our faith and trust in a risen Savior as well. But, Father, for those of us who know you, Lord, I pray today that we'd be willing to pray just like Jesus. Lord, not my will but yours be done. Not my will, but your will be done in my life. And so, Father, we surrender it all to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, as they sing, don't forget, you can text me even right now, 516-2164. If there's something that you need prayer for, if there's something that we could be praying for you about, we want to do that this morning. You listen as they sing.
friends, listen to me today. Uh, we've got a couple of our our, uh, our guys who are going to take up an offering. If you feel led so to give, we invite you to do that at this time. But um, I want to give you two quick announcements real quick. Um, you've probably seen this on Facebook. As you know, we'll still be here Mother's Day. And on Mother's Day, if you're going to be able to join us for Mother's Day, uh, we want to invite you to come. Um, I know that some of y'all have your pajamas on right now. You, you've probably still got like leftover Hardee's or McDonald's. Or, or some of y'all even brought your puppies. And I'm so glad to see some of these puppies because some of y'all, uh, you know, we got some amazing little pooches here. Uh, but what I want you to do is that we're actually going to be taking um, uh, family pictures of you and your family right in your car, and then we're going to be posting those. And so for Mother's Day, um, y'all may want to ask Mama what she wants y'all to wear. All right, so you might be able to get away with pajamas right now, but later on, um, those mamas may want you to kind of, you know, wear something for your first ever family picture in the car and don't worry about it we're not going to have them babies crying like you usually do it'll be real quick and so we'll take those family pictures you get one shot at that but i know high schoolers uh, we've got a lot of folks who are struggling and struggling Uh, we're going to have a little parade. They're going to start way back in Hardy's, and then they're going to make their way up here. And when we have our graduates coming on May 24th, uh, we got a couple of different folks from our community. It doesn't matter if you go to church at Westside or not. We just want to invite and honor our graduates. Look forward to just letting them know that, hey, we love you and we care about you. And so on the 24th, if you want to send us a Mother's Day picture or a graduate picture, we'll be playing that in our pre-service countdown. And so we definitely hope that you'll be able to join us on that day. We're so glad to, that you have come today. If you're glad that you made it again to uh, drive in church, would you get a honk honk? Can I hear that? Amen. All right. Well, as they say, and our, uh, our team is about to let y'all get out of here, um, I want to pray for you real quick. Uh, m make sure that you kind of look at those uh, dates um, on the 10th and on the 24th. That's coming up real soon. But as they say uh, at NASCAR, gentlemen, you may start your engines. All right, and you go ahead and do that. Let me close in prayer, and then we'll join and, and leave from here. Father, thank you for each person that's here today. Pray that you would bless them, keep them, may your face shine upon them, and give them your peace as we wave a white flag of surrender today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good to see you. Thank